Thanks, Asumu. Yeah, today I'm going to talk about the changes I've made to generic sets. Uh, this hasn't been released yet, so it'll go out with whatever the next racket release is. But it's all available on the trunk. You can get this. And there's changes both to racket set and racket generic. And I'm going to be focusing mostly on the set side of that today, but I'll take a little look if I haven't uh, run out of the time I'm already out of uh, to look at the changes in generics that people can use to build new generic interfaces. Um, so here's a look at just what it's like to program with sets now with what's currently released. We have set data types. Uh, there's three of them we can see here at the bottom. There's sets keyed on values that are uh, unique up to equal ha, huh? sets key keyed on eq ha, huh? and sets keyed on eq v ha. Huh? And these are all immutable set data structures. And we can write functions that iterate over them with inset and for, and we can check membership with set member. There's a number of functions that work on any one of these three set data types. And there's some built in, so we don't have to iterate all that often. There's convenient things like subset that will do some of the iteration for us. That's the state of what's released in sets currently. Um, <clears throat> but there are some things that it would be nice if we had additionally. For instance, in some cases, we want to build a set up from an empty set. If we're doing a set filter and we're picking out way fewer, we're not, if we expect that the result set is going to contain far fewer elements than the original, we might find it does less allocation to start from an empty set and just add the few elements that pass our predicate. But to get our hands on an empty set, we have to know what kind of set we took in and do a manual dispatch to say, was this an EQ set or an EQV set or an equal base set? And as we make sets generic and allow more kinds of sets, this becomes infeasible. And so in order to support generic use of sets, I've added another, we can think of it as a method on sets, so that instead of doing all of this to get the beginning of our fold for S0, we could just say set copy clear. A new copy of the set that's clear. It's got no elements. We just start from that. And it just does dispatch on the kind of set you give it S, ignores all the elements, and creates the initial set. And you can go from there. Uh, another thing we've, another limitation of sets uh, in the currently released version is they're all immutable, which is lovely. I love immutable sets, but sometimes you really do want to do a mutable update. Uh, oh, never mind that slide. Uh, and currently, if you want to be able to pass something around that's a mutable reference to a set, you need a boxed representation of set. You need some. So I said global set, but the box is only necessary to pass it around. But so now if you're going to want to have something like the equivalent of union for this mutable set, now we have to say we're going to unbox the set, we're going to compute our union, and then we're going to rebox the whole thing again. And suddenly we're manually adding mutation to our data type. So I went ahead and added mutable sets. And now if we get rid of our white space, we have a slightly shorter program, and now we have sets on which we have operations like set union already defined for us. And we can just, uh, <coughs> so now we have a mutable version of sets. So I've extended sets to have not only EQ, EQV, and equal, but there's those three versions in immutable and mutable forms. And like we have mutable and immutable hashes, the mutable version also has a weakly held key version. So we might have a cache of something that's stored weekly so we can discard keys. And currently, if you only care about the keys and not the values, you just use some sentinel value like true. Now I've added weak sets. So you can just say use a weak set. And we have unions. And again, it's shorter. We no longer have to, for different kinds of sets than the default, we no longer have to use a dictionary with ignored values. We now can have sets for whichever kinds of things we want. Going beyond equal and EQV and EQ is the big change for generic sets. We now want to be able to have sets of all different kinds of things. And previously, if we wanted to have, say, hash table based sets, but with a hash function we'd never seen before, some new kind of equality, some new kind of key, we had to write a whole big mess of stuff like this. If we wanted to use things like set union, we had to use the set data type. And the only way to get a custom kind of key is to get a custom use of the equal huh function. 
And so we write a wrapper with a whole bunch of stuff for the equality and the hash function. And then we convert everything into sets with wrapped values. And so there's a lot of work to build this. And the only time you can really naturally interface with this is conversion into and out of the set, because while you're interacting with the set, everything has these unnatural wrappers. Well, <coughs> so now with generic sets, we have something called define custom set types. You just define your comparison and or your hashing function. Here for hash functions, I just use string length. You can use anything you want. So you say define custom set types. And you name your set type here. It's stir set. And then you name your comparison and your hash function. And you get a bunch of names out of that. So the two I've used here is you get make immutable stir set. And to convert to a list, you just use the generic set arrow list. But uh, so for make immutable stir set, you're going to get nine names like that across the three, uh, three each of immutable, mutable, and weak, and three each of equal, EQ, and EQV. So you can commute can create string sets uh, in all of those varieties just with one line of declaration. And so it's just that short function if we don't rename things. <coughs> we can go beyond hashes, and we can now create uh, generic sets using the uh, generic set interface. Previously, if we wanted to use something other than a hash table based set as a set, we, we couldn't. There was just no way to uh, use set operations on anything other than these equal EQV or EQ hash tables. And you just had to define your own uh, versions of member and add and union for whatever thing you want. So now if I want to use um, a natural number and the bits in it as a set of natural numbers, I can say make this an implementation of the set generic interface. And I can define my methods. And if I pick the right ones to define, uh, member add and set to stream, I get a whole bunch of other ones for free. So why do I get a bunch of other ones for free? Well, here I've said this is a set that implements membership addition of single elements and conversion to a stream, which allows iteration. And from if you can add elements and check membership and do iteration, you can, for instance, uh, define union just based on those. You iterate over one set and add to the other. Um, <coughs> and that's because I've added, uh, because the features added to generics. And so now it's much easier, not only possible to extend uh, sets with a new type, but you only have to add a few key methods, uh, like membership, addition, removing elements, and iteration. And a whole bunch of other methods will all be filled in as long as they can be defined in terms of those. And that's using a new feature of generics called fallback methods, uh, which, <coughs> which for sets are already defined. There's fallbacks from most of the methods. Uh, but I'm going to take a quick look at what it looks like to define a new generic interface with fallbacks for some other purpose to see how we can use them for things beyond sets. So if we had a, if we wanted a generic interface for things that we can print and convert to strings. We might call it visible. So this would be used by clients as gen colon visible. And we, it has two methods. You can show something that's visible and that prints it. Or you can convert something that's visible to a string and that returns a string. And we can just say there's fallbacks. If someone in implements to string, we can obviously show it by printing the string. And so we can, in the fallback, say, all right, we want our hands on the generic version of toString. And whenever we show something, if it supports the toString operation, we're just going to write out the string we get out of that. Uh, otherwise, we're going to just try to display the thing using rackets built in, display things. There's nothing implemented for us. And so we can build whatever logic we want in our fallback methods to say what methods have been implemented and how can we use them to get the behavior we want. Uh, and the documentation for sets, for instance, says all the different uh, combinations you need. So for instance, you can implement intersection by uh, removing, from one of your, removing elements from one of your given sets or adding elements to an empty set. And so depending what's implemented, you get a different fallback that's kind of intelligently built up from whatever your type provides. And so if we implement something, we can either 
If we want something that we can show, we can either define toString or we can define show. And here's just two different types that implement gen visible with different methods. So you can just provide whichever ones you want to provide and let fallbacks fill in most of the rest. Uh, that's the really short, short version of what's new. Uh, yeah, that's a, that's a good question. So the way we mediate mutable and non-mutable, so uh, for constructing functions, there's just a different name that with the different signatures. So we have like uh, set add and set add bang, set union and set union bang for the mutable versus immutable. And then things like queries, like there's only one subset uh, because that's the same with the two. And so you can implement either or both of the constructor methods depending on your type. Um, there, there is some question of what exactly we mean by generic and what the appropriate pattern for using these. And we're kind of still discovering what that is for Racket, I think. Um. Thank Carl again.